So turn with me to Genesis chapter number 26. Genesis chapter number 26. I want to talk about this word that I think is kind of prophetic in its instance. It's this word called Rehoboth. And I, I really believe it is. It's a word called Rehoboth. Rehoboth. It means God has made room for us. And I want to kind of parallel this journey of TKC to this word. Where do we grow from here? Last week I talked about church that Jesus would pastor, and I want you to look at that. Genesis 26, it reads, Now there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar, and the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Don't, there's a famine in the land, but don't leave. Stay where the famine is and don't go down to Egypt, which is a better place for you to be, but stay where the famine is. That's so good. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and I will bless you. I will be with you. Stay in this place that is not profitable and I will be with you. Y'all missed that. S don't, don't leave and go to Atlanta. S stay in a place that's unprofitable for you and I will bless you there. That, see, you, you see, you're still missing it because God is going contrary to what is popular. He's simply saying, it doesn't matter what statistics say. It doesn't matter what a conventional data says. Wherever I tell you to be, I will bless you right there. It, it doesn't make any sense to put a church on a side street. That, that's not what they tell you in real estate. It's location, location, location. But if you obey what God says, and even though it's not popular, even though it's not conventional, I will bless you there. And the reason why I'm going to bless you is because I promise your father, Abraham, and there are some things that are in our lives that our fathers didn't get that is going to be in your lifetime. It's not going to be in the next lifetime. It's going to be in your lifetime. You ain't got to go nowhere. I'm going to bless you right where you are. I know the marketing studies don't show it. I know the demographic studies don't show it. But if you do what I told you to do, if you go fish in a pond because I told you not to go to the sea, I will give you more enough fish in the pond than you will ever get from the sea because you got to learn how to trust God even though the circumstances seem contrary. I'm going to do it in an unconventional way. Not the way everybody else has been doing it. And then verse number six, it, uh, Abraham, um, so Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought, then the men of the place might kill me on the account of Rebekah because she's beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistine, looked down and at, from the window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she's really your wife. Why did you say she's my sister? Pause. Um, uh, this is so important. The reason why Abimelech knew that she was his wife because the way he was caressing his wife and the way she was caressing him. That's so important. If you're married, people should know you're married. There should be some identification. There should be some caressing that lets others know that this is yours, that this belongs to you. You know, seven days without caressing makes one week. W-E-A-K. All right, you'll catch that next week. So here, here it is. <laughs> That's free. Uh, so here it is. Isaac planted crops in, this, in that land. In the same year, reaped a hundredfold because the Lord had blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth 
continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He became so wealthy that the Philistines asked him to leave because they started to get envious. Verse 19, Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, the water is ours. So he named it Esek because they disputed with him. Then he dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug a nut. Come on, he keeps on digging these wells and no one quarreled over this well and he named it Rehoboth saying, now the Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will bless you and I will increase the number of your descendants and for the namesake of your servant Abraham. Isaac then built an altar called the name of the Lord there in that place. This is so important to talk about Rehoboth because I am believing that God's going to make your work work. That God is going to make your work work. There have been a lot of us that have been digging and we have not achieved the water that we've been looking for. But I really believe that as we keep declaring we're making room, that God is going to let us walk into a season of Rehoboth where God is making room, where God is making room, and he's making our work work for us so that you're not working and you're frustrated because you're not seeing any results. You've been toiling, you've been working hard, and you're not seeing anything. I believe that if we can keep our hearts pure, if we can keep our hands before God, God's going to make our work work. And I know it did not work in one season, but sometimes you need a word to activate a season season that was dead in one space so that you can see what God is doing in the next. And here it is. God tells him to stay in a place. I want you to stay. And a lot of us think the best way to get ahead is to leave. And sometimes our greatest level of faith is not in us leaving. Our greatest level of faith is in us staying. And some of us think that it's greater on the outside when in actuality it really may get better if you just stay where you are as opposed to removing yourself from where you're supposed to be. And here it is, his ability to leave the wells that belong to his father Gerah was where Abraham was and Isaac had the ability to make up in his mind that I'm going to leave my father's wells because my father is dead and I said this on Wednesday some of us have allegiance to dead things and the reason why we're not growing and the reason why we're not moving forward is because we're loyal to something that doesn't have any life in it anymore and at what point in your journey are you going to realize I need to stop advocating for what is dead. I need to stop countering and co-signing for what isn't alive. The reason why you're not seeing God make room is because you're going to dead things and hoping that dead things produce life. And God said, I Isaac, you got faith. You're willing to leave your father's place. It is a place of familiarity. And Isaac, you're willing to step away from what is familiar. But even though you're willing to step away from what is familiar, because that is the prerequisite requisite to see God move in your life. You've got to be willing to step away from what is comfortable. You've got to be willing to step away from what is easy. And I remember starting this church, making $42,000 a year, walking away and taking a job at Enterprise, making half of that and trusting that if you step out in the deep, God will make up the difference. And God every month would make up the difference. How did that happen? Because if you are loyal to dead things, you will eventually die. <clears throat> and so when we, when we started TKC, we needed $2,800 to start for the first two months. And two gentlemen came and said, we're going to pay the first two months that you got going. And interestingly enough, the, the, the thing that was a confidence builder was when we started it, we were in the back of a warehouse. And, and there was another church in the front. And the church in the front told us 
that we can't put our signs out at front because we don't have a right to. And we had to humble ourselves and, and honor what they said. And they said, you can't use the front parking. You got to use the back parking. And so we phrased ourselves as a church that's in the back. And although everybody said, that's not going to work. You're not going to grow that way. That's not how you grow a church. But we held on to the word of the Lord that if you trust me, I will bless you right where you are. You do not have to move. Some of you are trying to chase what culture says is the right thing to do. And God is trying to give you an unconventional thing. Something that has never been done before. Something that has never been seen before. It's another thing if you're an international gospel singer and you play in a church, everybody will find you. But it's another thing when you're a nobody and nobody knows your name and you put a church in the back of a building, in the back of a warehouse, and you believe that God's word is stronger than my location. That if God told me to do it, it doesn't matter where I am. He will make people find you that don't even know where you are because that's what God does. And a lot of you are trying to follow the trends as opposed to following the word. What what did God tell you? Not what did the trend say. What did God tell you? Because God won't bless the trends. He's only required to bless his word. And he said to Isaac, I swear to you, if you do what I tell you to do, I will bless you. It's not like what we swear. When God swears, he swears on the angels. He swears on the earth. He says, I swear to you, I will bless you. Whether you're black, I swear. I will bless you. Whether you're right, I swear I will bless you. Whether you've been molested and abused, I swear I will. If you hold on to my word, it doesn't matter how uncommon it is, I swear to you, I will make your name great. I will make your descendants like the seas and the stars. And he tells Isaac, I'm making room. I'm making room for you. I'm making room for you. And there are sometimes... God has to remove spaces so he can make room for you. Sometimes in order to experience what God has promised, you still have to exercise faith. Just because God promised it doesn't mean that you don't have to use any faith. It doesn't mean I'm just going to sit and receive. I've got to do something. As long as God has given me a word, I have to. I can't just sit there and not do anything because the promises of God must be pursued. 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 You may be tired, but I'm pursuing. You may be frustrated, but I'm pursuing. It takes faith to keep digging even though you don't see anything. It takes faith to keep digging even though it didn't work the first time. And here's the amazing thing, that Isaac had enough faith to keep digging even though the first time did not work out. And here it is. Now, he's married to a beautiful lady. That's what the text says. And being married beautiful doesn't stop you from having blockages. Because we think a beautiful spouse doesn't stop blocked areas. And in the Old Testament, water was known in the East as a phrase they called it, the gift of God. And if you found water, you found the gift of God. And what happened was the Philistines that were with Isaac, they enjoyed Isaac's company. But when Isaac started prospering, they started to hate him because they did not mind him prospering, but they mind him prospering beyond them. So you got to be careful when you pray with people that they pray that you'll get blessed because I need to know what you determine how much of that is acceptable to you. Because there's some people praying that, Lord, I pray you bless them. But when they start seeing God doing what he's doing in your life, they start to say, that's too much. I was praying that God add to you, but I didn't want him to do that much in your life. And the Philistines got uh, within themselves and said, no, you can't stay here because you're too prosperous here. And we need you to go. And here's what they fail to realize. You can make me leave from the place. 
But that doesn't mean the blessing stops because I move my place. The blessing follows me. It is not the place that's blessed. It is me. And when you get comped and when you mess up and start thinking the job is what blesses you, you're wrong. It is blessed because you're there. God can move you anywhere and bless you. God can move you anywhere and take care of you. And there are some of us, you got terminated and you tripping. Well, let me help you understand if God closed one door for you sometimes he closed it because you didn't have enough faith to get out of it and so God had to kick you out because you didn't have enough faith to walk out and there are times where God is doing us a favor by closing doors and here it is this is interesting that the wells were stopped the wells were stopped up because the Philistines blocked them the Philistines were getting so jealous, so what they did was they plugged the wells. They plugged the wells. And what most of us do, because if someone plugs our well, it is by right lawful to go to war with anybody who plugs your well. That is a sign of war when someone plugs your well. But here's what Isaac recognized. It's no, it's, it does me no good to waste my effort on fighting something that's no good anymore. You may win the war, but you lost your time. It may be more effective to just go and dig your own well. And what happens with some of us is we want to go back and fight things that are going to drain our energy just so we can hear you're right as opposed to moving on and using that same energy to dig another well. And Isaac said, you know what? I'm not going to fall for your trick. It's going to take, and here's the thing. It's greater faith to trust God that even though those were your wells, that God can give you something better than what you lost in the past. And some of you keep chasing what you lost and not recognizing that God has something far greater than what you lost. And some of you are celebrating, I got my old well back. Well, you got a well full of mud. It has nothing in it. It has nothing to feed you. It has nothing to replenish you. And you're celebrating a victory without recognizing that you are a victim to wanting something that used to feed you in one season, but is now dry in this season. And so Isaac recognized, I'm not going to fall in love with a past season. Because some of you are infatuated with a past season. That season is gone. The day where water was flowing out that well, that season is over. you got to embrace a new season. And some of you keep running back to an old season. That well is dug up, is dry, ain't nothing in there. I know there are memories of drinking out that well. I know there are thoughts of how it was when you got fresh water, but there used to be fresh water. There's no longer fresh water anymore. And that's how Satan gets us. We used to be good friends. We're not good friends friends anymore. We used to be in harmony. We're not in harmony anymore. I cannot relive what's no longer there. I cannot recreate what's no longer there. I can no longer reimagine what's no longer there. You sometimes got to leave the old wells and trust that God got new wells that are much greater than the old wells. And when you start digging, if you find water and someone tries to take your water, don't get so caught up in what they're taking trust that God has something greater than what people are trying to steal because what God has for you baby let me tell you something it's for you if you serve him with your heart what God has for you is for you and it comes with peace it comes with no strife that's why the Lord made room for Isaac because he said this blessing can't be from God because it got too much burden into it. It got too much attached to it. If you bless me and I got to tell everybody every opportunity I get that you're the one that did this for me, that's too much. I don't want it. I'd rather start on my own and do it on my own so that I can be able to say this is a well that God has given me. No man can take the credit for it. No woman can take the glory from it. This is a well that God has given and he's given this well 
And this well is called Rehoboth. This well is called Rehoboth. This well is called Rehoboth. You've got to be secure enough that you know to understand the distraction of going to war would delay your fulfillment. The distraction of going to war will delay your fulfillment. The distraction of going to war will delay your fulfillment. The distraction of going back and forth with dead people will delay your fulfillment. The distraction of going back and forth with people will delay your fulfillment. To distract, and you know, I know what they said to Isaac because they say it all the time. Isaac started prospering and they start saying, Isaac, you changed. Yes, I did change. Mentality changed. Emotions changed. Thinking change and some people want to make you feel bad and they want you to go back to the ghetto mentality that you had. I ain't ghetto no more. I don't think like that no more. I'm elevated. I've ate at Ruth Chris. I'm not going back to Big Mac, Happy Meals, and cheeseburgers. And I may have changed, but that's what God does. And Isaac says, fighting old battles will delay the fulfillment of God over your life. Fighting old wars where well, some of us spent too much time addressing who we used to be. That's who I was. Why don't you go to lunch with who I was? Go to dinner with who I was? We all are becoming. We all are becoming. We all are becoming. And you and I got to know how to not tie up our energy and effort even into dead family. Sometimes our loyalty to blood cripples us. Because blood is supposed to give you life, not drain your life. Blood is supposed to give you life, not drain your life. And some of us are so loyal to Abraham's dead grave that we don't realize helping you is killing me. I'm not fulfilling my purpose because I'm spending all my time trying to resurrect something that will never be resurrected. If you want to be dead, I'm going to let you sleep in your grave. But as for me and my house, we're going to experience the type of life that God has promised and we're going to dig these wells. And even if it didn't work in 18, even if it didn't work in 17, you keep digging those wells. Keep digging those wells. Some of us are trying to save our family while we're drowning at the expense of saving them. Because we think that we need to be allegiant to what was. And we need to be loyal to what was. And how much further would you be if you didn't have to give bail money every month? How much further would you be if you didn't have to pay them out of debt every month? We got the same 24 hours. We got the same seven days a week. I got to live my life. I'm sorry I got to cut the cord. But I got to do what God has called me to do. And it is faith. To leave what you once loved and trust that even if I'm alone, my Father in heaven will look after me because he will provide for me. And he says, he says, you got to be able to walk away from what you sowed in and didn't get a harvest from. Woo! You got to be able to walk away from what you sold in. And I dug them wells. That weren't your digging. That was my digging. But I'm going to walk away from it. Even if I don't get a thank you. Even if I don't get an amen. Even if I don't get an I appreciate you. Even if I don't get a thank you card. I'm going to walk away from what I sold in. And didn't get a harvest. So here it is. Here it is. We got to make room. We got to make room. We got to make room. You got to make room. You got to make room. You got to make room. 
You got to make room. I, I can't hear what you're saying. I got to make room in this season. I got to make room. I don't care if you were with me, weren't with me, going with me. I'm going by myself. I'm going to dig these wells. I ain't got time to hear what they said. I got to dig some wells. You want to go to eat? Nope. Got some wells to dig. You want to go out? Nope. Got some wells to dig. You got to dig them wells. You got to dig them wells because there's water underneath. There's life underneath. There's your gift underneath. You gotta dig them well. Hear this. When he finished digging the wells, he walks away and he goes to a place called Beersheba, which is the place that God swears. It's what means it's the place that God swears. So when you finish digging and you get discouraged, there are times you're gonna have to go back to the place where God promised you what he promised you. And Abraham, Isaac went to the place called Beersheba, which means the place that God swears. And he had to go to the place where God swore to him what he was going to do in his life. And I want to challenge you this year. Whatever God does in your life, and it's a big thing. Whenever it's a big thing, you need to build an altar there. Because I need to build these altars to let God know the big thing didn't take my heart. I'm not talking about a post on social media. I'm talking about building an altar, something that costs you something. I'm, I'm going to build an altar because I want God to know if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have this. So I'm going to build you an altar here. I'm going to build you an altar. So whether it's in my living room, whether it's a poster that said God did it, that I wake up every morning and I realize if it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side, the Lord did this. No, it wasn't a connection. It wasn't somebody I knew. It wasn't somebody I got a hold of. God did it. I, I've not given credit to anybody else. The Lord did it. It is marvelous in his eyes. And some of you are finding people that are promising you a shortcut. And they're saying, I will do this for you. And I will do that for you. If you take their food, you're going to be handcuffed. You're going to be a child. You're going to be a slave. And some of you got to learn how to cut the door and say, I don't know what God's going to do. And it may sound so stupid and it may sound crazy but I'm gonna dig my own well I don't want McDonald's to dig my well I don't want Burger King to dig my well I want my own well I don't want everybody else's well I want my own well when you blow up I want my name on it I don't want to share it with anybody else I don't want to do what God called me to do all by myself build your own well you gotta build your well Build your well. 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 Here it is. It's not that you didn't, it's not that you did not dig wrong. You just dug in the wrong place. Don't let the frustration of the previous experience stop you from digging again. Don't let the frustration of the previous experience stop you from digging again. Faith is the ability to keep digging even though I failed the first time, even though I failed the second time. I got faith to keep digging. I got faith to keep digging. Dig until you hit water. I'm closing. So, my wife and I, we were at the mall, and we were doing retail therapy, and uh, <laughs> it helps. And uh, we were looking for a store that one of the members work in, and one of the stores the member works in, we couldn't find. And I'm used to finding this store when I'm not looking for it. But when I needed to find it, I couldn't find it. And I'll be honest, I went to Yale Divinity School, Princeton, and I can't read a map. Don't judge me, it's fine. And uh, so I gave my wife the map, and we were like, man, we don't even know where we are. And then I started getting really aggravated because I'm walking up and down the outlet, and all these people, all these suitcases and stuff, you tripping over. And uh, man, we couldn't find the store. And really, we went in the food court, and we ate, and then we came out the food court, and we couldn't find the store. But then when we started walking to the other side, we realized 
the reason why we could not find the food court, the reason why we couldn't find the store was because we were on the other side of the food court. On the other side of the food court was the store. And we were getting frustrated because we didn't realize that it was just on the other side. Okay, you'll catch that tomorrow. We were getting frustrated because we couldn't find what we knew it was. We knew it was there. We didn't know where it was. we seen it before. God gave us a dream about it. We know what it looks like. We know what it feels like, but we couldn't find it. But baby, let me let you know, don't get discouraged. Don't give up on your dream. It's on the other side. Don't get frustrated. Don't get mad. Don't get intimidated. It's on the other side. Everything that you need is on the other side. Everything you've been hoping for is on the other side. Your peace on the other side. Your joy on the other side. Your happiness on the other side. Everything that you need is on the other side. Everything, everything, everything. Make room, make room, make room. Why are you cleaning out your bedroom? I'm making. I'm making room, I'm making room, I'm making room, I'm making room. I'm making room for peace, I'm making room for healing. I'm making room for joy. I'm making room for a blessed place. I'm making room for a happy space. I'm making room everything I'm making room for. I'm not waiting till next year. I believe that God has given me a word that he's going to make room in this season. And you got to believe. And I want you who've been frustrated I want you who've been isolated. I want you who've been terrified by what life has thrown at you to just open up your mouth and give God praise like you know, like you know, like you know, like you know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know it. Yes, I know it. Yes, I know it. I'm making room. Room for my children, room for my family. I'm making room. Eyes have not seen, ears they ain't heard what God has in store for them that love Him. Make room. You may go alone. You may go by yourself. But make room. Make room. Make room. Make room. I gotta get this out. You know, you you have told me about this this opportunity that you had, and I've really been praying about. And I can't tell you, Betty, if it's a yay or a nay. I can only tell you this. I can tell you that God has given you something so unique that I'm not sure the way that you think is the way it's going to be. My prayer is that the lack of of speed does not cause you to settle for a well that looks full 
when God has a greater well. There is, I don't want to embarrass you because I know who you are, but I want to tell you the last four digits of your number is 3392. I want to tell you this, and I saw this. You will make a lot of money, but you're going to be poor in relationships. You're a Joseph. There are some people God puts their hand on and it attracts resources. But what school never taught you was that you're going to have to learn how to love being alone. Because you can't buy relationships because they only feed you till your money runs out. So you got to make room. Your best days are not behind you. They're ahead of you. You got to make room. You got to believe that God is able. You got to make room. Holy Spirit, I thank you for what's been said. You know, I don't really know you that well. And I know you know a lot about church and you know a lot about ministry. And, and I think because you've been to those wells before, you're not interested in them. And most often times, God calls the people who know about the well but don't want to dig it because they see how much mud it takes to dig wells. And so my prayer today is that you don't abort what you saw. Because even though what you saw might have been dirty, there's still water underneath. And so you've grown to become very cynical of the muddy place called church because you've seen it and you know how dirty it is. But even though it's dirty, there's still water underneath. And being gifted is interesting because people could overlook your gift and not see the person. And because you grew up as a pastor's child, people always thought you were okay. Everybody else was getting ministry and they skipped over you because they thought you were fine because you were the pastor's child. But you were the one suffering the most. You sat in silence and you're still in silence and you're hoping someone will discover that you've been asking for help all this time, but they just keep using you and they don't see your need. And so that's why you're so cynical because everybody sees that you're asking for help. They know you need help. And instead of redigging their well, they bury you. They bury you. And my prayer today is that God will raise up people in your life and in your world to find your heart. Your heart's been buried. Your heart's been buried. It's been buried. And I pray today the Spirit of God will resurrect your heart in this season. Even when you go back home, your relationships will be better. You don't always want to go home because home don't feel like home. But my prayer is, is that home will start to feel like home for you. It will start to feel like home for you. It will start to feel like going to college was a runaway. You didn't leave there because you had to. You left there because you ran away. And my prayer is, is that you find yourself. Y'all, I'm out of time. Holy Spirit, thank you for what you've said, what you've done. Lord Jesus, thank you.
happy birthday. I'm just going to say this simple thing to you. The fruit of things are our responsibility. The seed of things are not always our responsibility. So I want to let you know something that you probably never heard for years. And I want you to use this word every single day, which is going to help you make room. It was never your fault. Father, I pray that you just make room for all of us in our respective places, destinies, callings, positions in life. So I really got to do this because I'm one of the greatest things that I'll really have a trouble with if, if I don't do what I hear. Gene, would you grab my hand real quick? And we're going to receive our giving now. Our ushers are going to come. Let me tell you this. So I'm not, I'm not going to share anything that's going to incriminate. You know, I'm just going to simply say this in, in, in parabolistic things. When you get up and pray, your house feels it. When you don't, they all suffer. So I, I, I've never talked to you about any of this. I don't know. But there were some wells that were, mud was thrown in on your mother's passing. And those wells have been blocked up since. And some you need to redig, and some you need to just let go of. So my prayer is that God will give you the wisdom to know what wells to dig and to know what wells to walk away from. May your house be as rich as your desires. But when you pray, your house feels it. And when you don't, your house feels it. Ushers, let's receive our giving.